get my right candidate. Anybody knows this, who this man is? Yeah. What do you do when this man comes to your clinic? <laughs> Hide your wife. Hide your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I must tell you, Kapil Dev is probably more important in our country than our Prime Minister and the President put together. He is an icon who won the World Cup for us in 1983. He retired actively from cricket in 1994-95. Still today, he is about 48. Wherever he goes, he's like the Pied Piper. Nobody leaves that man. He is well loved and respected everywhere. Well, I have his permission to uh, sort of discuss him. When he comes to your clinic and says, hey, listen, I'm not seeing very well. We had seen him six years back, and he was hematropic, and he was playing golf. He's an avid golfer now. I'm not seeing well. I want to wear glasses. I don't want to wear glasses even while reading. I want to play my golf. I want to play my cricket. I want to drive a car, etc., 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 etc. And then you say that, hey, listen, uh, you know, what I will probably do is let's do a standard lens for you and uh, forget about it. The man says, no, I want what you did for the minister. Because he's heard about the minister, seen the minister who doesn't wear glasses and is extremely happy. And then he says, I'm willing to adapt. Please help me. So we. Obviously, sort of uh, keeping our fingers crossed because if anything happens to Kabul Dev, I'll be, be like Bob Wilmer. <laughs> Surgery is done and out comes this in the paper. I'm very happy with my vision. And the guy is going everywhere talking about it. That's a good part of it. Well, what was the thing which made us work? I mean, I have not done it for effect. It's just to tell you that one is under pressure when Somebody like that comes to you, and you know you have to deliver the goods, whatever happens. There's no way that you can sort of fool about this. That is the level of confidence which one has to achieve when you are being able to do it for people who are important. For us, every patient is important, but this is something which is something, as I said, mega. So people who no longer you know, want to wear glasses or people who are intolerant of wearing glasses are the most important prime candidates which we, you know, we should uh, target. What's the ideal first patient? The hyperopic. Why? Because he can't read distance, he can't read an intermediate, he can't read near. So that man is really going to, I think, acknowledge and uh, really going to be happy and satisfied with what you've done for him. I have realized and learned I should not touch anybody with more than 0.75 astigmatism. I've burned my fingers with a couple of cases, and these people are extremely unhappy. If there's any astigmatism, kind of left. We have had no toric uh, stores available till now, but till then, this is something which should be a limitation. It should be a motivated, well-educated patient and willing to adapt to new quality of vision and got minimum night vision requirement and easygoing personality, of, of, of course. Well, this the prostate king of our city, uh, the 72-year-old, extremely well-known, one of the most famous surgeons of our city. And he was an extremely arrogant man who wanted this surgery and he wanted it because uh, he'd heard about this lens. It's okay to operate on Kapil Dev and you know, getting your neck sleased off, but not a surgeon. However, we have this 58-year-old man from London who wanted, who, have, who had a plus 4.5 uh, hypometropia and who wanted no glasses. And uh, we did this surgery for this man, for both the eyes. He was exceptionally happy after the surgery and he went back to London within two days of the operation and we hadn't heard from him for six months. The problem here was that he was not available to us for follow-ups. We could not actually see him for the problems, and that's one of the very crucial aspects of this lens. Then we had the 49 year ophthalmologist who literally drove me up the wall. He had been uh, uh, shopping around for the array, then the resume, and then he was shopping around for the uh, technus multifocal. He heard about me and landed up with us for the restore. And, uh, being an ophthalmologist, of course, I said that you know what the pros and cons of this lens are. Please look at it, check it out. He wanted, he was very vehement, he wanted the restore. So we did the restore. And then I started getting calls 10 calls day one, 20 calls day two, 30 calls day three. I can't see rings, I can't see very well. I can't, you know, my fundus, I can't see ophthalmoscopy, you know, I can't operate, and blah, blah, blah. So I said that, why don't you get the other eye done? He refused. Three months, the man daily dilated, and then I started getting calls from all over the country, from Amritsar, Punjab. I started getting calls from Bombay, from Gujarat, from Dehradun, everywhere across the country. Friends were calling me up. What have you done to that man? <laughs> so you can imagine my plight. You know, I knew I was going to be meeting up in a conference where I'm going to be giving a lecture on the restore, and I didn't want that man to come up and say, "Hey, man, I am the guy." You know. <laughs> Luckily, he 
decided to get the other eye done. And the next day he comes with a diamond set for my wife. He comes with cards and flowers and stuff and all that. We haven't heard from him ever since, but he sends us new ways, greetings, calls up, how are you, etc., etc. Very happy. The moral of the story was bilateral restores is the thing which has really made most of the people extremely happy in our practice. I was, I was just trying to give you that it is not a honky dory sort of tale that you just you know get the good parts. You have to be able to deal with situations, and that's what puts people off at times. That you know I cannot deal with the situations. <laughs> One moment, yeah. So who are the people you should be excluding out? And this is more important than who you should be choosing. Anybody who's hypocritical and people with unrealistic expectations, not drivers, people happy with glasses or monovision, and my ops under the age of 45 because they can jolly well take off their glasses and be able to read very well here. Yeah, they will never be as happy as they have on the tropes, whatever you do for them. So I have discussed astigmatism. This is a very big chunk which all of us are going to be faced in the future in a very bad way. I've had the um, opportunity of doing one lady with uh, a very high society lady, as they call them, the cocktail circuit lady, who basically is a person who didn't uh, want uh, who didn't want to wear glasses and got laser gun in one eye, and she had minimal cataracts in both the eyes. Now, you know that in these people, doing the right eye oil power calculation is one of the most crucial and difficult things. And they are very well motivated, they're very well counseled by the counselors who've done the LASIKs or the, you know, any other practice surgeries. And they want perfection at every step, which we may not be able to give it to them, whatever we do. And the expectations are very high, and they look at the restore, if you want to put the restore as probably the last thing which should be done for them. And they want perfection of the vision after that. So this is a very tough group. I, I don't know what we're going to be f sort of doing in the future when you know, we have lots of people with the LASIK done who come back to us for cataract surgeries. But this is something which we have probably have to learn. Poor candidates, people who do not mind wearing glasses, lifelong history of glare, because there is a bit of a glare after this lens. Minimal nuclear cataract, because they will not be able to look at the benefits of the lens so much. People who generally are pretty fussy and have lots of complaints, extraordinary expectations for perfections and scared for the need for the extra step like LRIs or any other sort of procedures which is not to be done. So the classic dictum is under promise over deliver. And one, one important point is anybody who's at the age of 42 or 48, you see progressively his near vision is going further and further back somewhere here. So if you look at most of the 48 or 50 year olds, they would be possibly holding things there to read. After the restore, that near vision will come forward here. So if they've not been primed very well, if they have not been sort of told very well about this change, they will come and crip and crip and crip about that. I can't read the intermediate vision immediately after surgery. So we have to prepare them for this. Now, counseling is something which all of us forget because counseling we take it as not as our role as a surgeon. Well, counseling is not my you know it's not my job, but this is a big mistake. This is one of the most crucial things we have realized because it's between the two of us we counsel all our patients, and that's why we have this that the pre-op talk is really the most important, but we never tell them they'll be free of their glasses, ever. And we obviously look excited when we counsel them. We discuss every aspect of the procedure in detail, show them a sh you know, try and show them a small film of the procedure, and everything about even the possibility of laser enhancement or IL exchange or piggyback lenses, they, have, they, you know, they are discussed with the people. We tell them the following, not our results, we tell them the FDA results. We sort of tell them they will get clear and drinks at night, intermediate distance vision will be a problem, and that vision will improve in four to six months with adaptation. The usual questions asked, you know, to most of us when we have started or when we're about to start experimental surgery, I don't think I want to do it. How many of you done? You've got a very sorry figure when you say I've done only one. They will run away. Why is it that other people, you and I probably know that they probably do not want to use this lens or they're not certified or whatever the reason. A lot of people are extremely negative about this product. Why should I choose this? My friend is very happy with the old eye well. I can't accept glasses, give me a guarantee. I want you to give me a guarantee, otherwise I'll not get operated. We just don't take any of these guys. Uh, three slides about the biometry. Uh, you know, I know it's very basic stuff, but believe me that if you are not careful with the biometric, uh, with the um, all the aspects of biometry, especially the K. The K is something which is you know, going to be changing if you have a dry cornea and if you are wearing lenses. Manual K is still the best way to measure the K values, as all of us know, and the best done manual K can beat automated K anytime. So this is what should ideally be done. 
contact versus immersion in uh, IOL master I believe is a standard in Australia most of the uh, people I have spoken to have been using IOL masters back in our country IOL master cannot be used because most cataracts are extremely hard and as we know that IOL masters cannot be used in those cataracts so we still do the immersion uh, scans in those and if you have the IOL master of course I mean it's the best quick word about the uh, guidelines for the formulas I'm sure all of you know this extremely well but the point is to, to choose the right formula is very very crucial we have had a couple of refractive surprises and you know it is the combination of these three slides which I'm talking about is what they do is they have a stacking effect we've had the, the biggest surprise we've had is a minus two residual refractive error after very accurate calculations that's what we thought so these are things we need to be very, very careful about. <coughs> so expectations, uh, all these, you know, we know the results get better. An excellent tool I have realized, and you know, we've been using it with some people over the last, uh, uh, some time, is the use of a minus three. Now, how does this work? It's a very interesting concept, and it works like a dream. You will get back, you will get back people who have the problem about not being able to see, as they say, very well. The doc, I'm not seeing. He's reading 6 by 5 and he's reading everything here. 6 by, you know, n by 5. I can't see. So what do you do with those guys is give them a minus 3 in both their eyes. <coughs> what that's going to do is to change their near add into the distance vision, which means that the restore has got a plus 3.2 add. So if you're putting a minus 3 in front, we're negating that completely. So that person is now purely for distance. And then you ask that patient, can you see near? He says, I can't. Then you lift it up. Then the restore works the way it does. The distance he sees, near he sees, then you put it again, he says, I can see that, I can't see that, again. Now this has worked very effectively for us. And then you say, okay, now you have understood the benefit of this lens. If I had not given you the restore, you would not have been able to read without you know, some addition of the glasses. So now that you say that you can't read, do you want me to take off your lens, or, you know, exchange your lens or something, or what, what do you want me to do? Most people we have encountered, they've said, no, we're fine, we're happy, and, you know, we, we understand what has been done for us. So it works very well. <laughs> One word about targeting post-op refraction. You see, like, we are all used to targeting a little bit of myopia in all the monofocal lenses. The reason being, we want them to be able to read a little bit of intermediate you know, vision here. So in this, if you target myopia, what you're going to do is, to get that 30 centimeters further inwards, you're going to be able to make the guy read here, which he doesn't want to read. So we always target a 